Hello, and welcome to APS Stamp Chat. I am Scott English, Executive Director of the American Philatelic Society. Joining me is Mr. Henry Jahan, presenting on the USPS Stamp Decoder and Scrambled Indicia. Stamp Chats are made possible through the support of APS members and the Mighty Buck Club. If you want to learn more about APS membership or the Mighty Buck Club, please visit our website at stamps.org. For those watching live, your microphone and camera are disabled during the presentation. You can use the chat section to share with fellow attendees. Please submit your questions in the Q&A box, and Henry will answer the questions following his presentation. We're honored to welcome back our presenter, Mr. Henry Jahan, who is returning to Stamp Chat for a fourth time to give us another talk on hidden art on stamps. Henry has been a stamp collector for 64 years. When he was 10 years old, he began collecting when his grandfather gave him a shoebox full of old U.S. stamps he had accumulated while working in the mail room at Winchester Firearms in the early 1900s. From that beginning, Henry's interests have expanded to include the stamps of Canada, Great Britain, British Europe, and British Oceania. Still the heart of the stamp collecting interest have, has remained with his U.S. collection. Henry maintained his interest in stamp collecting throughout college and his 31-year career as an, American, as an Army civil servant managing the test and evaluation of military equipment, develop, developing range in, instrumentation, and acquiring tactical satellite communications equipment. Now retired in Florida with his wife of 53 years, he continues to be an avid collector, a member of the Central Florida Stamp Club in Orlando, and a member of the APS. Ever since the early postal experiments in the early 1960s, Henry has had a strong interest in the luminescent tagging of postage stamps. It was through this interest that he first became aware of hidden art on stamps. His last presentation on Stamp Chat addressed the hidden images that are only visible under UV light. Today, he will be telling us about hidden images using another technology, the USPS stamp decoder and the technology of scrambled indicia. Thank you for being with us, Henry. Well, thank you. I appreciate that introduction. Uh, I guess to get started, I need to uh, do a share my screen and uh, bring the charts up here. Um, now everybody should have it. Before we get too far into uh, this, the scrambled indicia technology, and you talk a little bit about the, the general environment of the late 1900s that was going on in the US Postal Service. Uh, they began experimenting and they played around with three different technologies. They embedded microprint into uh, some of the stamps. They uh, took the aluminescent tagging and they modified it so that it would become part of the art design, which is what my prior uh, presentation was on. And they also took a new technology called scrambled indicia and used it to hide images encoded into the stamps. And it's that last group that we're gonna focus on today. I don't know how many of you remember this thing called the stamp decoder that was sold by the United States Postal Service, but it was sold back in the 1990s and early 2000s as a means to see the hidden stamps that were encoded using the scrambled indicia. So what is scrambled indicia? Before we get looking at the stamps, it's appropriate that we explore the technology a little bit and understand um, a little bit about what this is all about. It's a patent, a scrambled indicia is a patented security technology that was invented by the Graphic Security Systems Corporation. And it's used to encode printed material with covert elements that are only visible using a, some sort of a decoder. And the decoder can be either be optical to look at it, something that's printed or digital to pull the coding out of a uh, computer digitized file. And the scrambled indicia protects against all forms of document fraud. It protects against counterfeiting, alteration, photo substitution, and cannibalization. The, image, the hidden images are lost when the document is photocopied. And as a result, it uh, provides a very effective means to uh, stop improper duplication of documents and alter alteration of them. 
The uh, actual images can be etched, stamped, embossed in metal or plastic, and it can also be printed on paper. So how does it work? Most all of us are familiar with these little plastic toys. Frequently you see them as souvenir magnets. Back when I was a kid, they came in cereal boxes as rings and other uh, gimmicks that allowed you to look at the plastic and as you tipped it back and forth in your hand, the image changed or moved. This particular picture on the upper left is a refrigerator magnet that I happen to have from a uh, place we visited a while back. And if you look at it and the top of the magnet is pushed away from the viewer, you see that the treasure chest is closed. But as you tip the top of the magnet closer to the viewer, the treasure chest opens. So how does this do it? It does this using what is uh, a series of lenses laid across the top of the, uh, of the image. On the right, I've shown a side view of the particular magnet, and you can see the magnetic backing. And then there's a thin white line, which is the edge of the, printed, the paper with the printed image. And on top of that printed image is a ribbed plastic lens, and you can see the little striped lines uh, of the ribbing. When you look at that ribbed surface from one angle, you're looking through one side of the lens. When you tip it, you're looking through the other side of the lens. And by changing the lens you're looking through, you're getting a different view of the printed material. On that refrigerator magnet example, the two images are printed in alternating stripes. So they have taken the image of the chest open and they've taken the image of the chest closed and they've cut it into a series of, of strips. And then they interlaced the strips so they alternate. And then they lay the, le the lens on top and the size of the strips matches the angles of the lens so that when you look at the lens in one direction, you see the one picture. When you look in the other, you see the other picture. Just like on this chart, you see one from one angle, you would see all black, from one, the other angle, you'd see all red. So how is this related to scrambled indicia? Scrambled indicia can be thought of as this process or this technology on steroids. Instead of an array of alternating strips of, of image, scrambled indicia goes two-dimensional and makes it an array of alternating blocks. So you can tip the, so you can have the lens adjusted looking in the up and down or the left to right angles. The picture segments that map into the hidden image are miniaturized in scrambled indicia. So instead of being little small pictures, they are individual pixels. And then each lens element or lenticle in the decoding lens, it can be oriented in a variety of different directions and focused on individual pixels at varying distances so that they can pick up what would appear to be dots in the shading of the background and pull them together to bring out an image. The specific positioning of the hidden image pixels and the lenticles orientation is defined by a patented algorithm, but again, something that, belong, that is owned by the Graphic Security Systems Corporation. And, uh, the whole process of knowing how to position those pixels and adjust those lenticles is really a very serious exercise in higher mathematics. The USPS stamp decoder was the device that was produced by the um, uh, Graphic Security Systems Corporation to allow you to see the image that's coded into the stamp. And the US Postal Service went ahead and used this technology to encode hidden images in 42 stamps starting in 1997 and ending in 2004. They didn't do every stamp, they just did 
a rand what seems to be a random smattering. Although there are some very specific characteristics that identify the stamps that were uh, that have the images in them, and that is they had to be printed using a pixelated printing process. So they are all either printed with lithography or printed by the photogravure process. The images could only be seen when viewed though through the stamp decoder. Now, the stamp, when you look at the stamp decoder, your first reaction is that the view of the, of the hidden image would appear only in the window that is outlined by the stamp outline, but that is not the case. The lenticles are uniformly spread across the entire decoder and the entire decoder uh, will decode the stamps whether it's in the viewing frame or not. So let's look at our first stamp. The first stamp that came out with the uh, hidden images was the Air Force Thunderbirds that was issued in 1997. It's Scott number 3167 for those of you who track that kind of stuff. And it's shown on the upper right hand corner of this slide. Now, if you place the stamp decoder over it, you see the image that's on the lower left. And you say, well, where's the image? All I see is some little modeling of the background. It doesn't look right. With this particular stamp, you have to turn the decoder and the stamp so that they are sitting at a 15 degree angle from each other. And all of a sudden, the hidden image appears. It says USAF, and then you have a star in the circle. Repeat it again, over and over, USAF star in the circle. You'll notice that sometimes the, U, the lettering USAF is light, sometimes it's dark. Sometimes the uh, star in the circle is dark, and the circle is light. Sometimes the star is light and the circle is dark. Now, before we go on and look at any more, let me make a few notes on viewing if you have one of these stamp decoders. And that is to view the stamp with the stamp decoder, the decoder must be right down on the stamp making contact. The hidden image is visible if the stamp is in a mount like a show guard mount or a prince mount but the decoder has to be right against the mount and it's, the image is not as clear as when it is viewed with the, when the stamp is out of the mount. And if you're working at a, looking at uh, stamps in an album and you're taking your decoder and just looking at them, you need to make sure that you've got the page laid out flat because the curvature of the page in the album as the album just opens uh, will uh, prevent the decoder from uh, displaying the entire image. And then as we learned on the um, Air Force stamp, on some stamps, the decoder must be rotated to see the image, but that's the exception. The first one that came out had that 15 degree rotation on it. Later on, there were a couple that came out with a 90 degree rotation on it. But for most part, the decoder, if the decoder is aligned with the stamp, then everything uh, comes up clearly. The next stamps to come out with hidden images were the classic movie monsters. Boris Karloff and Frankenstein is shown here on the left. When you put it under the decoder, you see that there are three lightning bolts. The lightning bolts are not real clear, so I put uh, red circles around them well, red ovals around them to highlight where they are on the stamp. Boris Karloff as the mummy has two Egyptian deities hidden in it, one on each shoulder of the mummy. Lon Chaney as the wolf man, he gets two very clear wolves, one on either side of his head.
Lon Chaney as the Phantom of the Opera, you get two opera masks, one on either side of his uh, image as the Phantom. And Bella Lugosi as Dracula, you get bat. You got three bats. The next issue to come out with hidden images was the Mars Pathfinder. And the Mars Pathfinder is a little bit different than the others in that it has only a portion of the, of the, um, well, actually it's in this case a mini sheet with the image on it. The stamp itself, which is inside the perforations, has the recurring strip of Mars Pathfinder July 4, 1997 USPS has that repeated over and over across it. And that, that image repeats across all of the ground area in the picture of Mars, but the sky area has no image in it. So they, they've only encoded the image into the ground as shown between the left and the right in the images. In 1998, the Wisconsin statehood stamp came out and hidden in the middle of it is a Wisconsin badger right up in the clouds. The red fox stamp that came out in 1998 actually had three different kinds of in embedded images. In scrambled indicia, it had a fox on the hindquarter of the fox in the image. If you remember from the luminescent tagging presentation, this stamp came out with two different kinds of tagging, came out with green tagging and white tagging. And also this stamp came out with microprint on the ear of the fox. So the uh, $1 red fox hits all the different categories of the experimental work that was being done by the USPS at the time. The Bright Eyes series, I think, are really kind of cute. Uh, this first one, the uh, Bright Eyes cat, you get a paw print on the left, and you get a mouse on the right. The bird shows up really well. The Bright Eyes parakeet has a parakeet cage sitting above its back. And these are the same stamp. When you're looking at these stamps, the stamp on the left and the stamp on the right are the very same stamps. The only difference you're looking at is whether the, you're looking through the decoder. The Bright Eyes hamster, you need a little hamster wheel down in the lower right-hand corner. And the dog. There's a bone and a doghouse. The fish, the fish is blowing bubbles. Eight of them, if you want to, if you count them. The next series to come out with hidden images was space discovery. And the space discovery images are not real standout when you use the decoder. The first one here, the space city stamp, you have a large and a small spacecraft, again shown with the, the red circles and ovals.
the spaceship landing stamp has a small spacecraft over on the right hand side of the uh, of the image. The person in a spacesuit stamp has a small spacecraft coming down above the little mountain peak under the 32 USA. And the spaceship taking off, it has a companion spaceship chasing it. And lastly, the large domed structure stamp has two more spaceships. The $3.20 priority mail shuttle landing stamp is probably the first example of the uh, scrambled indicia that actually makes some business sense. Because here you're looking at what was then a high value stamp and uh, laying across the back of it is a repeating pattern of Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Atlantis, Endeavor, Discovery. And it being a high value stamp uh, for the time, it was having some anti-counterfeiting in it made some sense. The higher value 1175 stamp also has the Enterprise Columbia Challenger Atlantis Endeavor Discovery pattern running across behind it. The extreme sports have taken a different direction with the hidden image. Here more on the skateboarding stamp, they've encoded the word gnarly. On the BMX biking, we have rad. For snowboarding, we have sweet. And for inline skating, we have fat. This series kind of leaks, reaches back to what was apparently the intended purpose of putting the images on the stamps in the first place, and that was to interest young people in collecting stamps. The $3.50 priority mail stamp, when you put it under the decoder, you see that it says priority mail right across the top. Of course, now we're into the new century, we're into 2001, and we have the $12.25 express mail stamp, and it says express mail. The Jefferson Memorial stamp from 2002, has Thomas Jefferson's signature under the memorial in the water there. The 2002 U.S. Capitol Dome has an American flag above the, the uh, value denomination. This one's my favorite. Harry Houdini, you put it under the decoder and you see he's wrapped in four chains, which of course was what 
Harry was so famous for is escaping from situations just like that. The Special Olympics stamp, it has the Special Olympics logo in the lower left corner. But this is a little bit different than the others because on this stamp, you have to turn the decoder 90 degrees. So instead of having it horizontal with the stamp, the decoder's standing, on, standing vertically while the stamp is uh, horizontal. If you put the decoder back on the stamp without uh, doing the 90 degree rotation, you just see a modeled version of the stamp. The Southeastern Lighthouses all came out with um, the year that they were built encoded into their image. So here we have the old Cape Henry, Virginia Lighthouse. It was built in 1782, which is exactly what uh, shows up in the uh, decoded image. The Cape Lookout, North Carolina stamp has its building date of 1859. Morris Island, South Carolina, again, a nice clear 1876. Tybee Island, Georgia, 1867. And Hillsboro Inlet, Florida, 1907. Now, in previous times I've presented this, people ask, well, these stamp, these lighthouse stamps also came as postcards. And the question was, is are the hidden images also on the postcards? Well, the answer, the short answer is no. The, uh, the stamp images are at the top of the screen here, and then the, the uh, postcard set is shown below. And if you notice, the postcard images have a lower resolution to start with, and uh, hence less detail. The postcard images are not the same images as the stamp images. They are wider than the stamp images. And the postcard colors are not as vibrant and differ some from the stamp colors. So there are clearly different images to start with. And when you put the um, decoder on the postcards, there are no hidden images at all in them. Um, I believe that the uh, printing of the postcards is not of sufficient uh, detail, There's not a high enough resolution uh, on, on the uh, dot matrix that creates the image to uh, support the, uh, the scrambled indicia within the, uh, the stamps, within the image. Early football heroes came out with uh, an image of a football player. Ernie Nevers got a picture of a football player in, in upper corner. But if you look closely, you'll see that there is a ghost image. You'll notice on some of the other stamps, you could find the ghost image too, particularly a couple of the uh, space uh, discovery stamps, there were ghost images. The um, football player appears again on the, again on the Bronco Narowski. Red Grange and Walter Camp. And again, Walt, Walt, the uh, ghost image shows up quite well on the Walter Camp stamp. The 2004 Air Force Academy stamp has the uh, Peregrine Falcon. And again, this to see this one, just like on the Special Olympics, you have to rotate the uh, decoder 90 degrees 
so it is running up and down on the stamp and not across the stamp. And then the 2004 National World War II Memorial, we got another American flag. This time it's a it's a waving flag, whereas the previous flag that we saw on the uh, the Capitol uh, Priority Mail stamp, uh, it was just a, a straight rectangular flag. And then the post office stopped putting hidden images on postage stamps, and the whole program ended. Why did they start? Well, it's not real clear why they started. I didn't find, I haven't found any real documentation, although I suspect if somebody were to go back and actually dig into the, uh, phil the philatelic records of the, of the post office department, they may find some memos or other correspondence, maybe some kind of a press release early on that uh, told the real reason. But I believe that the real reason is gonna to be to encourage young people to collect stamps and generate stamp interest in stamp collecting. And why they end the program? It had to be cost. According to Terry McCaffrey, manager of stamp development at the US Postal Service, the hidden image technology was very expensive. There's another side of that too, and that is since the image, hidden image technology was a patented process, that was owned by the Graphic Security Systems Corporation. There may have been some contract issues that we are not aware of or other uh, ownership issues that kind of put the squash on the program. But uh, no matter which way it was, it definitely was a very pricey thing to uh, get the images in there. And uh, without, a, without buying the five-hour decoder, four-hour, 95-cent decoder, you never saw them. Now, a few more thoughts. Uh, these are kind of answers to questions that people have asked me in the past about this. And that's the hidden image is embedded in the stamp. Uh, so they're not degraded when the stamp is canceled. Uh, and uh, if you have used stamps and you remove them from the envelope, even though they're all pressure sensitive gum stamps, if you uh, remove them from uh, whatever mounting they're on, the uh, removal of the glue uh, does not uh, have any impact on the uh, embedded image. And um, although the quality of the image goes varies from issue to issue, and you can see where some of them stood out beautifully, like that birdcage on the bright eyes uh, parrot or parakeet, uh, and others, they were really fuzzy, uh, and in some cases, almost hard to see. The hidden images are uniform across a given issue. So if you have a sheet of uh, any one of those issues, all the stamps on that issue are gonna have the same quality of image. Now, all the stamps that uh, contain the scramble of DCA were commercially printed, and they were not all printed by the same printer. And it appears to me, although uh, this is purely anecdotal observation, that the, hidden, the quality of the hidden image seems to be somewhat dependent upon which commercial firm did the printing. But the big takeaway from this, the one thing if, that I really hope everyone who's watching really grasps the importance of, is that saving the decoder is as important as saving the stamps. When the last decoder is lost, these hidden images will be lost forever to history. Because without the decoder, you cannot see them. And the decoder came in two forms. It came in the original packaging, which I've shown on the left. And then later, they packaged it uh, in a uh, fancier bubble wrap package. And uh, they're both the same decoder. Uh, and uh, we need to... We need to save them. When dealers buy up collections, they tend to throw away the supporting stuff like uh, perforation gauges and, and sometimes the excess stamp mounts and all that sort of thing. But we need to make sure that when they buy up collections that have decoders in them, they don't throw away the decoders, that the decoders get to 
maintain as a collectible. So at this point, I'm to questions, and I will escape from the uh, the slide here and uh, turn it back over to our presenters, no, to our uh, hosts. Let's see. Um, stop screen sharing. Thank you for that, Henry. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, ostensibly, the uh, the idea was not just to encourage, but I, I assume to some degree was to help combat uh, counterfeit uh, counterfeit stamps. Do you know if it was effective at that or if, if that was sort of an afterthought? I honestly don't know. Um, I'm quite sure that it would be a very effective means to prevent counterfeiting because Without the technology to embed that image, you can't put it in. And if you take the stamp uh, and the image that you can see without being able to decode it and just copy it, even if you make an extremely high resolution copy, you can't capture the uh, embedded uh, um, the embedded image. The other question that I had in your presentation, you know, you talk about the cost of the printing technology. Now, the at the time that this was done in the late 90s and into the mid 2000s, uh, I'd imagine that printing technology was a little, little different than it is today. I wonder if it's possible that something like this could be brought back or are there other means to encourage collecting and or fight uh, counterfeiting that are much more cost effective for the USPS? Well, I don't think that uh, we're, we're not talking about the, the actual printing technology, the act of putting the ink on the, on the paper to, to make the stamp. Sure. The cost is in the running the algorithm against the image of the stamp to create the uh, the actual image that has to be printed, because what we're, what the algorithm does is it goes in and replaces individual pixels in the uh, in the uh, print. Now, if you're looking at uh, these these stamps are printed uh, maybe a thousand dots per inch, so you're talking about taking a uh, a one thousandth of an inch pixel and changing it and uh, doing a whole bunch of them. In the right places to make them come out with the uh, the image, and it's not it's not something that just happens in one spot. It happens uh, in various places around the stamp, so that uh, you can. Uh, it's not the uh, putting the decoder on. It's not position dependent. So you don't think the the technology has changed to the degree that it would make it cheaper today to do it than than it would have 20 years ago. No, I, I really think the thing that drove the price on it was the fact that it's a patented technology that the government didn't own. I got you. Uh, there was a question uh, in the Q&A uh, section that I wanted to pose. You, you sort of answered the question of, can you still purchase the decoder? Uh, I, I want to extend it to that and, and ask if there are any practical tips that you can share with uh, with the viewers on a way that they might be able to track one down today? Uh, you can find them on eBay, and some dealer, some stamp dealers do actually sell them. So there are some around still. And um, so the, the getting one uh, is not all that hard at the moment. The, the big worry is 50 years from now, will they come, how many will have been thrown away? Good question. Uh, our next question from a viewer is, have you attempted to evaluate all stamps since 1997 with the decoder to see if any additional stamps had been encoded but not disclosed as having images? I have not attempted to look at all, but I have looked at many and I have not found any others. Sounds like a fun little mystery for everybody to track down uh, some stamps and see if they can find a, a, an unknown previously printed stamp. The, um, the Scott catalog does not identify any others than these. Um, and I have not seen any where anybody else has posted anybody, any stamps other than this list. Um, 
it's possible, but I doubt it. Okay. Uh, we did have a comment here. I had a hard time keeping up with the secret message stamps. The USPS catalogs didn't seem to emphasize the novelty. Do you have any comments on the marketing side of this? Um, not really. Uh, I don't think they did a very good job of marketing it. They, you know, selling the decoder was kind of a, a put off at the first point because not that many people wanted to go out and spend the almost five hours just so they could look at the see what the ma magic message on a particular stamp was. And the messages weren't all that inspiring. Um, so I think that was one downside on the marketing. Uh, they, they did announce that, you know, this stuff, this message or image was hidden, but uh, they didn't do it with a whole lot of fanfare. Scott does list them all though, all 42. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting question we got from YouTube. Would it be possible to re recreate, rebuild the decoder or is the decoding so unique and specific that the hidden pictures would, would be lost forever when the last decoder is lost? I believe that if the last decoder is lost, the pictures will be lost forever. Um, now it is quite possible that Graphic Security Systems Corporation could go back and create coder, recreate the coders because they created them in the first place. They created the uh, the process of embedding, and they also created the decoder and sold the decoder. But uh, it's it's their product, so it's possible, I guess, uh, at least as long as they're still around as a company, or their records are still around as a company, that they could be recreated. I don't know that the uh, decoder itself could be reverse engineered, but then again. Uh, with uh, laser scanning technology, maybe it could be if you had one to, to laser scan. Sounds like a, an interesting challenge to someone who's a little wiser than I am on that front. It's, it's an interesting engineering problem. I think we're better off by not losing the decoders than trying to re reverse engineer one to see if we can get new ones made. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great suggestion. I like it. I like it. Uh, there's a comment here. The USPS announced which stamps they used uh, for the technology. The contract was for a limited number of stamps. Uh, so perhaps we've reached the maximum number. We know we know all the ones that uh, that have been issued. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, interesting. We're getting some comments from the worldwide. Uh, there's a thanks from Guatemala. Uh, enjoyed the the presentation, so it's good to know that the uh, it, it, we're reaching beyond the borders to collectors around the world, and we'd like to welcome everyone, regardless of where you are. And thank you for participating in the stamp chat with us. Uh, I believe I've reached the end of the questions that I've got through Facebook, YouTube, and uh, in our chat section today. Uh, is there anything we didn't touch on, Henry, that you think we should before we we say farewell? Not that I can think of. I mean, it's not a really huge subject, and uh, once you go through, once you go through and look at all 42 stamps, you've seen it. Uh, <laughs> I hope I spent long enough on each one for everyone to get enough of a look. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, because for those of you who joined the presentation late. Uh, during the live stream, we will be posting this up on the APS website, or excuse me, YouTube page at uh, uh, very soon, as well as there will be a rebroadcast on Facebook Live. So if you did not get to see all of this, I encourage you please to go back and watch it. Um, Henry, thank you for this excellent presentation. We re I really enjoyed it. I found it incredibly educational and uh, enjoyable. Uh, for those viewers watching, don't forget to like and subscribe to the APS YouTube page for all of our future stamp chats and other video content. If you're not a member of the APS, please join today and become a part of our stamp community. For more information, visit us at stamps.org. Thanks again for joining us and have a great day.